this video and hundreds more like it available on free Photoshop video tutorials.com. In this video we're going to learn how to make it appear like there are blinds casting a shadow on your photo but we want to make this realistic right so uh, the first thing that we need to do here is um, let me just show you how to actually create the blinds right and why they're ultimately not the most realistic thing in the world and then how we can make it better right so first thing to create the blinds we create a new layer and with our rectangular marquee tool here we're going to just uh, create uh, what could be the blinds here so something like that fill that in with black right so that's alt and backspace because black is my foreground color here I'm going to with the move tool hold down shift and alt and, and that allow me to copy that uh, and I'm just going to try to just uh, evenly space this out here and uh, fill this in with uh, the blind. So just doing it quite quickly here. You don't have to get very precise about it. You just want to get realistic. So it seems like the, there's the blinds that are you know going through the photo. Okay. And now we're going to set the opacity here to 40%. And also to make this a little bit better, we're going to add uh, blur and Gaussian blur and add two pixels of Gaussian blur here, right? So here we have our blinds, and uh, it's it's quite nice. But there's one problem, and that is that it's not, you know, it, it wouldn't fall flat across everything here. Here it's the it's the the wall, so that's fine. But when it when the blind gets here, it's supposed to be bumpy over here, right? So to make this bumpy, it's called what we need to do is called a, uh, a displacement map, and it tells it's it's a it's a mapping. Of uh, of where there are bumps, so it, it takes sort of like a topography map. If you ever seen one of those, you know, like uh, on an atlas, uh, certain colors, lighter colors, so white uh, is flat, is sort of like sea level. So it won't do anything to to uh, to the blinds, right? And uh, darker things, black will be the most. So it will be the most amount of. So it's sort of like the highest part. So as you get a bit of a gradation between white and grays and black you start being able to have some of the bumps and things kind of just conform to uh you know uh how uh, the, you know to to the tonality of the photo and you get a little bit more realistic casting of the lights of the blind so that's that's the that's the general thinking of it that's how we do it so uh let me just show you um the process right so we unview here our layer here go back into a background layer and now we're just going to quickly just change our mode here to lab color don't flatten the image and in their channels so go to window and channels if you don't have that window and channels select your lightness select your lightness channel right click on it select duplicate channel and now we've done this because we're going to the destination is not going to be you know it's not going to be a duplicate uh, layer or duplicate channel as we normally do uh, in in the document itself we want to duplicate this to a new document so we're creating a new document with just that channel so we'll click OK. And as you can see here, it looks the same, but as you can see, there's there's nothing else. Alright, we created that blinds that's in the other image. On this one, it's just that uh channel that's been duplicated into this into this new layer. Okay, into this new document. So now what we want to do here is uh add a little bit of contrast uh to this. So we're gonna go to adjustments and levels, and uh, we're just gonna pull in the, the bars here a little bit. So the black ones and the white ones. I'm just gonna add it a little bit more contrast to it. There we are. And now what we want to do here is uh, select uh, some areas that are not going to be affected. For example, the background here. And uh, transform that into white. Because like I said with the whole topography thing, white doesn't change anything. It keeps it level and flat. And the bumps would occur from the gradations of you know, black and grays. So we don't want anything to be happening here. So what we need to do is exclude that. And the best way to exclude it is to select through color range. So if we click on the color here, we have a preview of grayscale. Increase the fuzziness here temporarily. We want to click on it, but we don't want much else in the boy selected. So we want to change the fuzziness. And as we're doing that, we want to then add to our selection and add some of that gradation here and then change the fuzziness again until we get a sort of like a happy compromise so let me uh, select this here okay and uh, I think we're done so we're gonna go ahead and click OK 
So we've made sort of a compromise. We've selected almost everything here, but a bit of the boy. And it's a simple fix to make, because what we can do here with our lasso tool, holding down the Alt key, is we can remove that selection. So we're just selecting here inside of the boy and removing that selection right there, like so, right? So we remove that selection right there. And now we can paint this in with white. So let's just put our default uh, colors here and just fill that in with white. So that's Alt and Backspace. We're filling that in. And I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup here. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Just a tiny bit of cleanup here to remove some of these specks here. We don't want any of uh, these little specks coming through here. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of that. doesn't need to be perfect, but the least amount of little sp speckling going on is better. Okay. So now that we have that uh, set, we can uh, do a little bit of blur. The displacement maps works a little bit better with a bit of blur. So we're going to go into filter in Gaussian Blur, use the same blur we used before. And now we need to save this because the, place, the displacement map is loaded from a saved image. So we need to do a file, save as, and then we just need to save our image. So I'm going to save this as a blinds bump map. And uh, what we need to pay attention here is that it needs to be a Photoshop file. So make sure you're saving a format as a Photoshop PSD file. Okay. So all you need it there. We can close this uh, layer now, this, this the image. Now we can go back into our uh, original image, go into our channels, go back into the lab color, and just bring it back all the colors, right? We're going to change our mode again to RGB. Don't flatten it. So we're back into you know the original format. We're going to go back into showing our uh, blinds. We're in our blinds layer. And now we're going to add the displacement map, like I said. So now we're going to add the information for Photoshop to know how much to bump things like over here, how much are you going to bump this area here higher to reflect the change that this, you know, is is a little bit higher and, you know, making it more realistic. So the way that we do this is going to filter, distort, and displace. And what we need to do here, uh, let me just zero this out here for you. Make sure that we are, by default, it should be like this, stretch to fit and repeat edges, edge pixels. Okay. Let me just explain to you here. Now, there's horizontal scale and vertical scale. That what the displace will do is it'll set the limits of how much things are going to be changing. So, for example, how much uh, because of a differentiation between white and black is there going to be in the horizontal scale, right? So, do we want any of the this here to change horizontally? And the answer is, of course, no, because the blinds is already horizontal. What's going to happen, if you think about it, when it hits something that is three-dimensional here, is that it's going to move up and up and around like that. So in the case of it moving up or down, what we're doing is actually setting the vertical scale. Now, depending on your image, you might need some, um, like, 20 pixels of uh, displacement. This image is quite small, so I'm going to add 5 pixels of displacement. That sets the limit, right? So at 100% black, this blinds here will be moved 5 pixels and 50% will be 2.5 pixels or thereabouts and so forth. So we're setting the limit to how much there's going to be of a bumping up or down uh, depending on the gradation here. So we're setting this to 5. Of course, uh, you can you know do 5. If it's not enough or too much, then you can undo it, go back in, and do it again. It's quite, quite a quick process. So we just go ahead and click OK, select our blind, uh, blinds bump map that we created, and there we are. So we've created that bump. And as you can see, there's a bit of the bump going on here and here and so forth. And if you wanted it more bumpy, then you can go back, undo, and uh, add more and, uh, and and see if that works. I think this works quite well here. This is quite realistic and it's working quite well for me. So there you are. So let me just show you here the before, of course, no blinds, and uh, the after. And let me show you the before with the regular blinds and the after with them being displaced. Much better. If you enjoyed this video, show your support by subscribing, rating, and adding it to favorites. Leave comments on our website and we'll create even more videos that interest you.